in today's YouTube video where you're going to be going over the best settings for Warzone 2. Not only my controller settings, but also the graphic settings and some settings you're going to need to change on console to get better graphical quality and overall brighter and more vivid colors. Getting into my controller settings, I am using the tactical button layout. Basically, this switches your right stick and the circle button so that way you slide with your right stick and dolphin dive with your right stick and then you melee with the circle button. I don't really slide all that much anymore now that slide canceling has been removed, although dolphin diving, I will say, is actually really, really Really useful i would also like to note that i am using a scuff controller i use a scuff impact it is a ps4 controller with four paddles on the back this is what i've been using for years getting down here playing on flipped i personally do not play on flip if you guys are on a standard ps4 controller i recommend playing flip i have digital tap triggers which basically makes my triggers like mouse clicks so for me playing on flipped isn't as big of a deal but if you're on a default ps4 controller or even ps5 controller if you switch them to using bumpers it's basically like having mouse clicks without actually having to pay for them controller vibration i have this turned off some people leave it turned on it really doesn't matter i don't think it makes a difference i played with it on forever for sensitivity i am playing on seven seven for the sensitivity multiplier i leave all of these at default vertical aim access that is all at default as well for the change zoom shared input i'm playing on sprint tactical sprint and focus for change zoom shared input i'm playing on sprint tactical sprint and focus basically when you guys are using a dual zoom optic this is kind of the default call of duty setting so you would just zoom in with your left stick just by pressing on it just like you would in previous cods obviously you can see on the right it says if you want to change it to melee you could use this circle button or whatever your melee button is to change the optical zoom but highly recommend leaving that on default for the automatic sprint i am playing on automatic tactical sprint i am on the fence about actually switching this to just being automatic sprint because in this game a lot of the weapons are very heavy and getting those weapons up in time you know in a lot of these gunfights specifically inside of buildings can be kind of difficult to do when you're playing on automatic tax sprint so go ahead and test out playing with it and without it i don't think it is as important specifically with the fact that you can't slide cancel to reset your tax sprint anymore i think it almost might be more beneficial to play without it on getting down here to the weapon mount activation i'm using ads and melee for the interact and reload behavior i have prioritized interact that is because i want to loot as fast as possible this is a setting that you should be changing for warzone for example if you want to pick something up off the ground or open a door instead of pressing and holding that you just go ahead and tap the square button and it will either pick up that item or crack the door this makes it so that way looting is a lot faster and it'll give you a leg up on your opponent for armor plate behavior i have it on apply one i do on my paddles have a paddle set for my armor plates i don't always want to apply all because i do struggle with canceling putting in armor plates a lot of times if people play on apply all or whenever i have whenever i'm trying to cancel it i'm spamming you know a triangle or whatever i end up going ahead and taking out the wrong weapon then after so i'd rather go ahead and just take my hand off of my paddle and then it stop putting in plates so for me i use apply one in the advanced settings this is going to get a little bit more in depth obviously aim assist you're going to want all of that on the gyro behavior a lot of people are thinking this is similar to the ds4 windows thing that was a while ago where you could like tilt your controller down and get rid of all recoil on weapons this is not like that this is more of an accessibility setting i'm not entirely sure but for me i don't know exactly what it is i definitely don't want to play with it just because of the foreign nature of it and just me not knowing so i went ahead and have it turned off for the aim response curve i am playing on dynamic i do play on a lower sense so dynamic allows you to spin around a little bit faster and it also allows you to fine tune your aim for me i recommend dynamic i would not recommend linear because it is kind of crazy to play on i would definitely say stay between standard and dynamic for the ads sensitivity multiplier while you're in focus i have that at one ads sensitivity transition timing you're going to want that at instant you want this as fast as possible just like everything else in call of duty the faster something can happen the better for the custom sensitivity per zoom this is just what i am using it is different for everybody my high zoom settings are always a little bit different than everybody's i prefer my high zooms to be a little bit faster simply because i'm zoomed in more and i do use as high zoom optics at a lot of different weird ranges i'm not your normal kind of sniper guy so i am sniping a little bit closer than most people the input dead zones this is going to be something that you guys really need to pay attention to and will make a big drastic difference in your gameplay and it's going to be changing your left and right stick input dead zone for the left stick i have it at 0 0.01 and then for the right stick i have it at 0 0.05 basically what your dead zones are these are like the minimum actuation point on your controller so by default i believe they're either 0.1 or 0.2 so think of it out of a scale of 100 if it's at 0.2 you have to move your stick 20 percent of the way 
for your controller to pick up and the game to pick up that you're actually moving your stick so it makes it harder to do fine-tuned movements and aiming so for me i like it on 0.05 so it's a little bit more responsive but if it is at the default ones i promise when you change this you're going to notice a drastic difference in your aim and a drastic improvement getting into the left and right trigger i have these both at 0.01 i play on digital tap so it doesn't really matter but if you aren't playing on digital taps you're going to want to lower these going back to the left and the right stick if for any other reason your character is moving on its own go ahead and bump up the right stick dead zone until that stops and same goes for these left and right triggers if for some reason your character is adsing by itself or firing by itself go ahead and bump these up just by one until it stops for auto move forward i have it to off for tactical sprint behavior i have this on single tap sprint just because like i said i'm probably going to be switching off of my auto attack sprint so when i do want to get into a tactical sprint i just want to have to tap it one time for the grounded mantle airborne mantle and automatic ground mantle turn all of these off you never want to auto mantle in game it is very frustrating to auto mantle in general so turn all of those off plunging underwater i have this set to movement honestly i didn't even know the setting was in the game i pretty much always whenever i want to go underwater i either crouch prone or i really love dolphin diving off of things into the water i think it's a lot more fun parachute auto deploy this should be turned off if you guys do turn this off and it was previously on please remember to pull your chute there'll probably be a few times when you guys go down and break your legs but you're able to pull your chute a lot lower closer to the ground therefore you have less of a chance of getting beamed out of the air sprinting door bash obviously that is going to be on ledge hang mantle behavior i have this on mantle only all of these are on off weapon mount exit obviously you want that on and then the weapon mount exit delay you want to have this on short you want this on the shortest possible time again in call of duty anything that you can do faster it's always better so have this on short basically what this means is that little bit of movement to the left the right or backwards will go ahead and pull your character off of the mounted position which is, is what you want you want to be able to get out of that as fast as possible depleted ammo weapon switch i have that as off quick c4 detonation i have that at off honestly c4s don't really have a big role in this game getting into the pc graphics settings for the display mode i am using full screen exclusive it doesn't really matter what you use it's just i don't really tap out of my game that much so i leave it on exclusive i am playing on a 27 inch 1440p monitor and i do obviously have a 3080 ti i'm working on a 4090 build right now but for right now that is the specs that i am rocking vsync obviously turn all that off I do use a custom frame rate. You can set this to unlimited. However, if you do that, you basically just are overworking your computer, overworking your GPU in the pregame lobby, basically for no reason at all. So for me, I rock custom for the custom, for the gameplay, custom frame rate limit, I have 300. Menu custom frame rate limit, I have it at 69. Why? Because 69. And then out of focus custom frame rate limit, I have it at 30. Something I would like to note, if you're having low frames in the firing range, that is because the firing range is technically running on your menu custom frame rate limit. So if you don't have it set to unlimited and you do have it set to custom, but you want more frames in the firing range, go ahead and set it to unlimited just while you're in there and then go ahead and turn it back off. I haven't had too much of a problem. Just something worth noting. Uh, if you guys are having stutters in game, go ahead and restart the shader optimization, basically to reinstall your shaders. That is something that I'm going to be doing here after this because the stuttering has been a little bit crazy lately on this game. Uh, for the brightness, I have it set to 55. Just helps with some of the darker spots on the map, you know, some of the crazy shadow spots inside of buildings and, you know, ill lit areas. Highly recommend turning it to 55. Focus mode, I have turned off. And then HDR, I have turned off. Going into the quality, I am, again, playing on 1440. So you want to have your render resolution always set to 100. This is something that is kind of a preference, but for me, I really do like having the Fidelity FX CAS and I like it having set to 100. This is basically some sharpening in game. This is a setting that you should go ahead and play with and figure out what you like the most. For me, anti aliasing, I use the Filmic SMAA T2X. A lot of people are going to say the SMAA T2X is going to be better. It will give you more frames. However, if you guys like attention to detail like me, but basically what this does is it gets rid of some of the little black dots that you'll get on your character's face or around your guns. It's just something, I don't know exactly why it's happening, but for me, I prefer it to look really, really nice, really, really sharp. So I go ahead and go with the Filmic SMAA T2X. Anti-aliasing, I have this on low. Video memory scale, I have it on 90. For the texture resolutions, I am rocking low. Texture filter, I have that on normal. Nearby level of detail, I have set on high. Distant level of detail, I have on high. Clutter draw distance, I have it on long. Particle quality is on low. Particle quality level is on low. Bullet impacts and sprays, I have it on on. This is something that is gonna vary for a lot of people. For me, I like having it on because it does give you some in-game information and it doesn't make too big of a hit on your frame rate. 
but basically if you get shot at and you don't know where it came from you can sometimes turn around and you can see the bullet impact and for me i like having it on just because in some instances it comes in handy shader quality i have it set to low tessellation i have it on off terrain memory i have on max on demand texture streaming you're going to want to have this turned off if you do have problems with some visual quality stuff you can go ahead and turn it on it will help out a little bit at the cost of the frame rate but if you want maximum frames and kind of the best performance in game you're going to have this turned off streaming quality is set to low volumetric quality is set to low as well this volumetric quality is part of what causes the you know the smoke that comes out of the front of the barrel of your weapon and kind of blocks your view so the higher you have it essentially the more detailed that's going to be and for me i'd rather be as least detailed as possible in a lot of instances i wish that this was able to be turned off but unfortunately they don't give us that option as of right now deferred physics quality i have on off water cost caustics that goes on off both of those are just for the water obviously i don't need the water to look great i'd rather have more frames shadow map resolution i have on normal screen space shadows is off spot shadow quality is low spot cache is low particle lighting on normal ambient occlusion on off again this is one of those settings it'll make your game look better but it's not worth it for the sacrifice of frames screen space reflections i do have this on off if for whatever reason you guys are having trouble with your gold guns not loading in right sometimes your gold guns will load in and kind of look like a, a, a stick of butter or like a crayon you can go ahead and turn this to high restart your game load it back up and it should be fixed obviously you're going to lose some frames but it at least make it look a little bit better static reflection quality i have that to low weather grid volumes on off nvidia reflex low latency i have this on plus boost and that's because in my cpu time means my cpu time is higher than my gpu time as you can see at the top so if that is the case then you want your nvidia reflex low latency on on plus boost because basically it just tries to even it out as much as possible so for me i play on on plus boost if that's not the case for you then go ahead and just set it to on because it does help out a little bit depth of field off world motion blur obviously off weapon motion blur obviously off and film grain set to zero those are all no-brainers for field of view i am playing on 120 obviously you can fine tune this to what you're feeling what you're liking i've been playing warzone for a long time now i stream a lot and make a lot of content people love seeing the high fov they love seeing people move around fast or at least what looks like fast obviously in this game you're not really moving fast at all but still i play on 120 for the field of view i am using affected and then for the weapon field of view having it on wide so i'm as zoomed out as possible trying to help with that visual recoil because it is pretty thick in this game however i will say i've been doing some testing and just you know some future videos are coming out but just know that red dots and iron sights seem to be the way to go for warzone and with that being said you might want to bump your fov down a little bit or even you could change your ads field of view and put that to independent if you know you want to be more zoomed in a little bit um for me i am going to stay on this just because that's what i'm used to but it is worth noting that you know red dots iron sights kind of making a comeback might want to play on a lower fov for first person third person movement obviously you want to have this as the least so that's at 50 percent and then the rest of these are just kind of preference we are on the topic of getting the most out of your pc and you're going to want to go ahead and have some of these few windows settings turned on to get the best performance if you guys go down to the bottom left search and just type in game mode make sure game mode is enabled obviously you're playing games on pc have game mode enabled the next thing you're going to want to change is going to be in the xbox game bar go in here make sure this is turned off if this isn't turned off this is something that is going to be running in the background on your computer thus taking up you know valuable resources that could be getting you more frames in game then from here you want to go over to the related settings it says graphic settings you can get to this either from the game bar or even from the game mode setting and then in here you want to make sure you have hardware accelerated gpu scheduling you're going to want to make sure you have this turned on although i will say if you're having problems with hitching stuttering and game things of that nature go ahead and turn that off you might see a slight hit in frames but it might help some of those issues this could possibly cause problems depending on what driver you're on i don't have all the information on that i'm running on the nvidia driver 522.0 0.25 i have it enabled i haven't had a problem yet i do plan on updating my driver so for me i am a big believer if it's not broken don't fix it so i'm on the fence if i'm gonna update my driver but just worth noting make sure your drivers are up to date if you guys want to possibly get the best performance but for me especially with warzone 2 being so new i might wait a couple of drivers before i go and actually install one last thing i would recommend that you guys do in order to get kind of the best visual quality out of your game on pc is to right click on the desktop go to the nvidia control panel in here you'll be able to see a lot of settings and then go to adjust desktop color settings once you guys are in here if you scroll down these are the color settings that i'm using 
I like my digital vibrance at 80%. I've always put my digital vibrance way up. If you guys still used to use NVIDIA filters, like in-game filters, this is the same thing as the saturation filter, just without actually putting a performance hit on your game. This is definitely a way to do it. Obviously, you can see at 80%, the screen is very, you know, colorful. If you turn it down, you know, 50%, this is what it would normally look like. 0% takes all the color away. You, you know, you put it all the way up. It's very, very bright and vibrant for me. Like I said, I like it at 80, so I'm not even gonna hit apply, so I don't mess with anything. But brightness, contrast, all that kind of stuff, all those settings are there for you guys. The last setting that you're gonna wanna mess with on PC in particular, and this actually is available on console as well, just in a slight variation, is gonna be going into the interface. And then you can scroll down and go ahead and get to the telemetry. This is gonna be important stuff. Going down, really the only couple things that I have changed is gonna be the crosshair bobbing. I have this turned off. I prefer my crosshairs to just be, you know, smack dab in the middle of my screen and not move. But the important settings that you're going to want to have here is the telemetry. This gets you these things at the top of the screen right here. So obviously I have the FPS counter, the server latency, pack of loss, graphic card temperature, graphic card time, the graphic card clock. And then I have the VRAM usage turned off and the clock turned off, but I also have my processor CPU time turned on. These are just what I have on, on console. You can use telemetry to actually display your ping and your packet loss at the top left of your screen, which I highly recommend that you guys do because if you're losing a lot of gunfights or thinking that you're lagging, it's easy to glance up at the top left and actually see if you are or not. And then coming down here, skip introduction movie, turn that on. It's gonna save you time getting into the game almost every time. It's something I always tell people to turn on. Tool tips I have on. Obviously, you want to get information in game if you're, you know, your PC is having problems or your internet. And then the parallax effects, you want to turn this off. This will help with game stability and hopefully will stop some people from crashing. And then center dot, I have that turned off. You don't necessarily want the center dot. The other dot actually follows exactly where your gun is aiming in game. So you're going to want to follow that as much as possible. So you're going to want that turned off. And then getting into one setting that will make a difference on console, give your game a little bit more vibrance. You know, since you guys don't have the NVIDIA setting, you can come down into the color customization. This is in the interface tab. So the same tab that we were just in, you can go to color customization. You can put your color filter to filter number two. This is what I found gives the most pop, the best change in color on console, from my opinion. But when you do do this, make sure that you change this to not only world and interface, but to both. Uh, if you guys don't want kind of your menus to change color, you could just send it to world. But the big thing is to just have it take effect in the world that you're playing in just so that way, you know, that is what the game is. That's what you're going to be seeing in game. So set it to world. Obviously, you can go ahead and change all of these and customize these to whatever you like. But again, this is what I recommend. This will give you a little bit more vibrance and a little bit more pop in game. And then lastly, the audio settings. There's not too much secret sauce in here. It's just what I play on. A lot of people have been asking me for it. I play on home theater, master volume 100 music. Turn that all the way off. You don't want any music. Uh, when you're in the menus or even when you're in game specifically in game you don't want to miss any important information dialogue volume i have that set to 50 and then the rest of this is just you know just the normal default stuff if you guys found any value in this video or are going to be looking for more warzone 2 dmz kind of tips tricks and guides videos this is going to be the channel this is going to be the spot for you guys we are on the road to 300,000 subscribers and i'd love to have you guys along for the journey anyway if you haven't already dropped a like i very much appreciate that and without further ado guys hope you have a fantastic rest of your day why? Because 69.